Hi, I'm Phil, and this is the APC Backups 1400. Similar models are displayed on the screen here. The reality is all small UPSs like this will be very similar on the inside. Now, APC tell us that we can't really replace the batteries, or we probably shouldn't, as an end user, either get a professional to do it, or throw it away and buy a new one. I don't want to buy a new one, so I'm going to open it and replace the batteries myself. Let's do that, shall we? Now, the very first thing you need to do is pull out this yellow fuse connector on the back to disconnect all the batteries from the internals so you don't give yourself a bit of a shock. Got myself a small screwdriver here and I'm just going to use that to pop this in here and help me pull out this connector. Gosh, she's pretty stiff. Right, that's pulled to one side now. Now there are four screws on the back here that we need to remove and there are also three screws behind this concealed panel. So we'll do the four on the back first. Just a standard Phillips number two screwdriver will do the job. And of course the warranty if seal is broken sticker conceals a screw. But let's face it, if you're doing this, your warranty is probably long past anyway. There we go. Now that frees the back. But you don't really want to pull it too much. Just leave it disconnected. Now when it comes to the front, turn this on its side. You see there's a little little hole at the bottom here and that's where we're going to get some purchase with a spudger. Now I've got these plastic spudgers but you can also use two or three screwdrivers or something. I am going to recommend you wear gloves during this process because if you slip it's going to hurt. Now although we're going to stick our screwdrivers or spudgers in here the clips are actually here here and down there and down there so be mindful of that as you're trying to pry the plastic off. And yes this is a faff. Once you've got one off, it's always easier to get the others off, he says. Okay, just slide that down and it all pops off. Okay, now be careful with this because there's a ribbon attached. It's got our first screw here. Now, thankfully, these screws are all the same, so I'm not going to get them confused. Of course, if you've got a slightly different model, that may not be the case. And then I've got a final screw here at the bottom. Or is that the top? It's the top. There you go, screws are removed. So now we need to separate the top casing from the bottom casing. And we do that in much the same way that we did a moment ago with the spudger. The important thing is that you want the heavy bits to be at the bottom. So we need to work out where the heavy bits are, but we'll figure that out as we go along. Now my top has already popped off, but if it hasn't, it would just be a case of prying it with one of these. There we go. There we go. We are already up the correct way. Wonderful. Look at that. So I lied. It's upside down. Now this part I believe is connected. We have a screw connection, so be careful when you do that. You might find it easier at this point to remove the screw connection in here. Now I'm just going to take this plastic piece off the transformer and put it back into the other side of the case. That's just in case there was a bigger transformer in there and, and the case is generic. There are various systems in here. We only really care about the batteries. So to remove those, you just have to pull the connectors off. That should be a case of just giving them a bit of a wiggle like that. Okay, the middle section comes off and then a red one there like that. And then the battery can just be removed. This is actually two different batteries, but they've been stuck together with some tape. There we go. Let's just take a quick look at this battery. So it's an APC branded unit here. It doesn't really give you any useful markings on it about the voltage and the capacity. Just some warnings about binning it. However, there is a QR code here. Please focus. This is very heavy. Now this QR code takes us to a website that tells us this is actually just a repackaged set of batteries from another manufacturer. And you can absolutely buy those batteries or you can do what I did and buy some cheaper ones off of Amazon. And here they are. These batteries were £20 each, which makes this job a £40 job. But that's cheaper than buying a new £120 UPS, isn't it?
I've gone for a slightly higher capacity rating than the original UPS. That shouldn't really make too much of a difference, but you probably don't want to be going under the rating. So make sure your number of amp hours are the same or more. I'll put a link to these batteries and some spudges in the description for you. So popping these in should be a simple case of removing these little plastic bits. Like that. And then just popping them back into the UPS. There we go. Now connect all the battery posts back together. And that's it. All we have to do is put it back together in the same way we took it apart. Incidentally, if you know what this little separate wire is for, do let me know because I've got no idea. There we go. Let's clip back on. Now we'll put some uh, screws back in the side. Oh, but of course it's upside down, isn't it? I'm going to put the back back on first. It should give it some more structural integrity. Put the remaining three screws back in. And that should be that. Just got to put the front back on. Done. All that's left then is to put the connector back in and see what happens. The connector is connected. What's going to happen when I press the button? It clicked. Let's give her some juice. It's buzzing. The light's on. It's stable. I think that means we've done it. Right, I'm going to go plug this back into my server and I'll show you on the screen what it says. As for the capacity difference in the battery, did it make any difference to the length that the battery lasts? That's for me to find out and for you to see on the screen now. I hope you found that useful, and if you did, maybe I'll see you again. Until then, good luck.